Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live. We got there this time without any hiccups, touch wood. Feeling good. Oh my goodness me, there's so much going on at the moment. You know, just so much shit going on. Never a dull moment in crypto. So uh, anyway, the, uh, the reason we broadcast on Twitch every day live at five from wherever I am in the world is because uh, YouTube have already banned two of my channels and they were preventing me from editing my shows and they're deleting episodes. Uh, in fact, they're still not even allowing me to edit my shows. So I literally have to do everything on my, uh, on my desktop which I find absolutely hilarious when you consider like the, <laughs> the small number of views I'm getting, but they're niche. You know, for me, it's all about quality because quantity follows quality. But I block most of the quantity anyway. <laughs> you know, I want to uh, I want to create a market for the rest of my my listeners to pick up and create their own following from. That's the uh, that's the idea. So I've got a oh yeah, so a little bit of uh, news. Uh, just asked uh, CSW how he'd like to be attributed to uh, Bitcoin. And the answer I got was designer and creator of, which is why I've uh, adjusted the image here saying uh, Bitcoin SV, a genuine Bitcoin by Satoshi Nakamoto, designed and created by Dr. Craig S. Wright. So I think we've uh, got everything. We'll probably be uh, quite happy with that. So I was just listening earlier to a, a CNBC uh, broadcast with uh, Chamath Palihapitiya, who is the founder of Social Capital, was uh, I think one of the sort of co-founders of Facebook or helped yeah helped it in the early days, uh, admitting that uh, that Bitcoin is a uh, is is a con at the moment. He said it's it's a confidence game, which is basically a con game. That's where the name con comes from. Con man, confidence man. Um, because he said it's got it's got no utility, which was which was I found genuinely quite shocking, and I've made like a new uh, video of that, which I've uh, used as my introductory video to my channel. But uh, let's start off with the way that I usually introduce my show uh, by letting shitcoiners describe Bitcoin for us. Take the floor, Michael Saylor. Here we go. Let's do this. 
I like Bitcoin the way it is. In fact, in fact, I love Bitcoin the way it is. And that's the way it's described in the white paper. But Michael Saylor has got no idea about the politics that have gone on behind the scenes. And um, the way it's currently constructed, it is possible to put all $250 trillion of monetary energy in big blocks of encrypted energy on the blockchain. Maybe the Bitcoin will be a million, you can probably calculate $10 million of Bitcoin or something. Big blocks, $100 million chunks on the blockchain. It'll store all the monetary energy in the world and it should store it for the next 100 years without losing any of it. If Bitcoin's going to fail, it's not going to fail due to lack of functionality or lack of speed or lack of scalability. In my opinion, if Bitcoin is going to fail, it's going to fail because of it loses trust and security. We have to protect the network integrity at all cost. Yes, indeed we do, Michael, which is why it has been forked and tampered with and effed about with, which is why Bitcoin, the genuine Bitcoin, is BSV, because it follows the protocol from A to B, from start to finish. It is not a fork. BTC Core Coin and Bcrash are forks. They are hard forks of the code, which makes Bitcoin centralized projects and therefore not Bitcoin and fundamentally worthless. Shout out to uh, BSV Russia and JPAPS in the house already. Nice one, boys. Just uh, let me know if you see any, or let me know what the numbers are of uh, people listening. I always like to get a rundown of, uh, I think, tw uh, Twitch send me, um, uh, you know, sort of show uh, figures at the end, but let me know who's listening. That'd be good because I'm just sort of keeping an eye on the screen out the corner of my eye. Um, so uh, that was Michael Saylor saying that he wants big blocks and we need to protect the network integrity. And this is Peter McCormack basically admitting that the network integrity is out the window. Take the floor, Peter McCormack. Here we go. Bitcoin is so different now from when Satoshi was here. It's a completely different project. It doesn't matter who Satoshi is anymore. Even if Satoshi came back, I don't think he would just be immediately welcomed as having this God-given right to decide what happens with Bitcoin. I think he would have to earn his right back into the project. Bitcoin is 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 the sum is is built by, based on consensus now. Are you sure, Pete? Because it didn't sound like it to me. <laughs> Honestly, like you, you don't, you really don't have to scratch the surface very far to find out that shitcoin is literally talk absolute shit. It's uh, it's hilarious. So uh, now we're going to listen to a uh, Samsung Mao telling us what consensus is, as defined by Peter McCormack, which is basically what they decide because they control it. Take the floor, Samsung Mao. Bitcoin was created by by the central bankers that enslave you today. It is their scapegoat. How do you want? How do you answer those, Max and Stacey? I think the evidence is clear that uh, they do not control it. It, it. There's ten years, almost eleven years now, of uh, track record. Yeah, yeah. Blockstream yeah. controls it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who does? Blockstream. Oh, <laughs> all right. I was looking at you when I said that. I'm sure you were, Stacey. I'm sure you were. <laughs> Something else you need to be looking at when he says that is how shit they have made the chain. So let's just have a listen to uh, Anders Antonopoulos trying to describe sophistication to someone. Honestly, it's just absolutely hilarious. Here we go. Anonymous asks, I transferred my Bitcoin with too low a fee and it's been unconfirmed for 10 days. What should I do? The idea that you uh, did a transaction and that transaction had insufficient fee uh, tells me that you do not have a wallet that allows you to increase the fee after a transaction has been broadcast. Uh, wallets that allow you to do that support one of two technologies. One is called replace by fee, which allows you to broadcast a second transaction with increased fee. And the other one is a, a technology called child pays for parent which allows you to make another transaction with the change 
or even allows the merchant or recipient to make another transaction with the payment amount uh, that is a child transaction that has more fee and that child fee is enough to pay for the parent fee causing both the child and the parent to be confirmed simultaneously. All of this is uh, stuff that you can do with a more sophisticated wallet, but it can be confusing, especially if your wallet is not sophisticated. I would say the first transaction you need to make is to a better wallet. There we go, people. So it looks like we need sophisticated wallets. <laughs> Oh dear, honestly, absolutely hilarious. So this is my latest one. I made this clip today, like Blue Peter would say. Here's one I made earlier. This is Chamath Palliapitiya admitting that Bitcoin is a con game. Like, have a listen to this. It's shocking. This is a thing that either goes to roughly the value of gold. And at the time, it was about $100 a coin. And so there's very little downside. There's all this asymmetric upside. I said, take 1% of your net worth and buy this schmuck insurance. This is now a confidence game, right? There is no real utility in this. You just called it a confidence game, which is yeah, right. a con and game. And we've done okay. The, it's a con the economy's game. <laughs> Can you believe that? Smock insurance. It's a con game. There is no real utility in this. You know, even they know it. And it's just like, well, if there's no real utility in this, and there was prior, hadn't you better sort of like look around to see if there is utility somewhere else? You know, because Satoshi designed a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Do what? I, do you seem to think that he's just going to walk away off into the sunset with his multiple billions of dollars, like most people do, to like live their live their life on a beach? Afraid not. Satoshi is principled. Like, uh, in fact, him designing Bitcoin for it not to work reminds me actually of um, a program I saw once where this elderly chap who was retired was describing how um, his life's work was effectively this, this huge railway bridge. Um, somewhere, somewhere in the UK, I think it was in the UK, uh, crossing this huge fourth uh, waterway. Anyway, um, the story is, uh, it, they it, it, this was you know, years ago, um, the bridge took about 10 years uh, to make and when they'd finished they basically found that the bridge was something it was either like you know, an inch or a foot too narrow and effectively it couldn't be used for what it was designed for because they built it to the spec that was literally just like a few inches out and he was devastated I mean can you imagine even though he was paid to work on that bridge for 10, 10 plus years of his life, you know, only to find that you've, waste, you've basically wasted 10 years of your life building something that was an absolute piece of shit. You know, I mean, honestly, you would, th there is more to life than just money. Um, you know, when you've put your heart and soul and grafted and energy into something, you want it to be useful. You know, uh, this is what Satoshi is like. He wants Bitcoin to be, he didn't design a Ponzi scheme. Anyone can design a Ponzi scheme, talk an absolute load of crap, get people involved, rip people off of money. It's a piece of piss if you are a snake oil salesman or a confidence man because they have been around for centuries, centuries. E oldest trick in the book, but to design something that is truly useful, that actually helps, you know, that is different, you know, and that's what he wants. You know, he doesn't want to just like make this piece of crap that's got no utility that Chamath just mentioned there, you know, is a confidence game. You know, like it's, it's, it's honestly the mindset of some of these people, I just think it fascinates me because I just, I just can't relate to it myself. So effectively I have to learn from it, but there we go. Uh, Bitcoin is a, uh, it is a confidence game. It's schmuck insurance, according to uh, Chamath Palliapitiya, you know, so uh, let's just remind ourselves, what is it that shit coiners say? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it still cracks me up every time. <sighs> oh dear. All uh, right. So I, I mean, again, I want everyone, I want everybody, you know, listening to my show to to understand that the fundamentals come down to 
uh, the understanding the paradox of the centralized starting point. Oh, that's a good one. Elon Schmuck. <laughs> Elon Schmuck. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So it, it all comes down to uh, to understanding this this paradox of the centralized starting point. So um, uh, uh, yeah. But let's do the old Charlie Lee video before I find my uh, my medium stuff. Charlie Lee, take the floor. Here we go. You created Litecoin, right? So this has to be something like you're incredibly passionate about. Yeah. As most of you probably know. Um, I kind of created it just for fun, right? It wasn't, I didn't really expect it to become anything. And I just remember the guy that founded Litecoin uh, sold it all on the top. And I was like, dude, not, you know, not great as the founder to, to unload everything literally on the high tech. Great as a speculator, but not as a community builder. <laughs> and I literally just heard on a, um, yeah, it was a CNBC interviewing the one of the founders of BlockFi and they were saying that they're now allowing people to take collateral out against their cryptocurrency, but the main they only allow that on three cryptocurrencies, which is Corecoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Like honestly, like when this market tanks, so many businesses are going to go to the wall for being absolutely ridiculous. You know, I almost don't have any sympathy for them because they have had long enough to figure this out. You know, there is there is no excuse if you're going to go to that extent and build a business on something that is so blatant, that so blatantly obviously doesn't work. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, so let's just have a quick look at these. Uh, my medium article on this. This is one I want to go over now, which is like a true decentralization. And again, I would encourage everybody to like you know go through my articles. Honestly, there's a lot of work. That I've uh, that I've put in here, and I've basically I've nailed the fundamentals of Bitcoin. So this is kind of like the alternative white paper, really. Here we go, true decentralization. Check it out. I even spent ages on this uh, on this image here. I wonder if we can enlarge this image and it comes up. Do I get the opportunity? Oh, yeah, there we go. Check it out. So I thought, really. Um, this, this image says it all. So we've got the release of the white paper on the 31st of October 2008. Then we've got the start of the network on the 3rd of January 2009. Then we've got yeah, the white paper in Satoshi Nakamoto. Is he English? Is he Japanese? Who knows? But we've got the Genesis block. And then what the Genesis block is, uh, that created uh, well, sec economic security through, uh, through the neutral growth and dilution and distribution of the uh, of the starting point, which is what this represents here. So, you know, men have various um, uh, you know, miners on the network, all distributed with with competition between them, um, and so so that the dilution continues and expands, but then the chain also continues and expands, and uh, the network grows in strength as uh, as it increases in size, because it because there is more uh, computation and well, there's more blockchain is an infinite mathematical sum. Uh, that just simply continues. But the longer the sum, um, the more data in it that is locked into the chain. So it will take more and more, well, I mean, yeah, just and more and more people use it. So therefore, it just simply becomes more and more valued, uh, which is which is economic strength. Uh, and again, that's the same with the dilution of the centralized starting point. So I thought, I thought this is like really quite a good image, you know, made it myself. <laughs> So let's have a uh, let's have a quick read of this. Here we go. True decentralization. I mean that that image kind of like sums it up really. The process of uh, decentralization is never ending. This is because a network either becomes more centralized or more decentralized over time. If it continues to become centralized, it will inevitably end up 100% completely centralized which means the process of decentralization is the opposite. Although the percentage of decentralization diminishes, it never actually stops. It just continues until the percentage of increasing amount of decentralization becomes insignificant. The decentralization is created through competition. If competition cannot be uh, generated within a system, then that is evidence that the system is centralized. The state of competition is infinite which is why, as stated above, it is never ending. 
Competition can only exist in a system that continually scales. If a system were ever to stop scaling, it would start to centralize and the stronger players would then have to start taking market share from their competitors rather than from a newly available market source. Decentralization can only exist in a system where everybody is held accountable. If not everyone is held accountable, then those who are not would simply be able to do as they please and eventually take over the system as they followed the path of least resistance. This is why Satoshi Nakamoto designed Bitcoin with a chain of signatures with the intention of holding everyone to account so that no one could get away with doing anything in the system that no one else would know about. Decentralization is, all about, is also about creating a permissionless system that anyone and everyone can build on. This is done in Bitcoin by locking down its protocol. When the protocol is locked, it literally means that no one can change it and therefore permission is not required to build on it. Lastly, for a system to be decentralized, it must scale to cater to the size of the overall market. If not everyone can use it, then is it of no value to anyone because an alternative system will be found. This is why a competitive system is essential, only because a competitive system can scale infinitely. The only protocol capable of achieving decentralization is the protocol that Satoshi Nakamoto designed and described in his white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. This protocol named Bitcoin Satoshi Vision is known as Bitcoin SV and as the ticker symbol BSV. Yes, indeed it does. There we go. So let's have a, a quick look at these figures. Uh, it's really interesting to see what's going on with Huobi at the moment. Um, and the price is still holding strong when you consider uh, we had that uh, very public and unceremonious uh, dumping by OKCoin yesterday. You know, the price hasn't actually really been all that affected very much at all. Um, so we've got the hash rate. Again, I'm not interested in CoreCoin or Bcrash. They can just do one. Hash rate 0.5%, network nodes 2.3, transactions 30.8, block size 42.9. Uh, again, I'm sick of looking at Bcrash and CoreCoin because we know what we can see over there. So let's see what's going on on the hash rate. Look at this. Any sign of Huobi? No. Look at this. Tau, Hathor, Hathor, Tau, Hathor, Hathor, Hathor. Um, uh, solo mining. A via BTC is still on there, but Hathor, Tau, Hathor, Tau. Look at that. Good to see uh, Mempool, Norpool on there. I was hoping we might see a bit of uh, Matterpool. A hash rate, as we know, hash rate follows price, follows value, follows utility. Once it has utility, it can create value. Once it creates value, it can then develop a price. When it develops a price, it can then be measured against the cost of other goods and services and used as a medium of exchange. Check it out. Cool coin B crash will stop overnight. B crash versus Bitcoin. B crash versus Bitcoin. Here we go. 99,000 times cheaper. To transact on uh, Bitcoin, the core coin, which is more than 10 times uh, cheaper than Bcrash. Oh, 36% um, more profitable to mine on BTC. Maybe that's why Huobi has done a runner. Uh, daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Yeah, Bitcoin winning. Uh, transactions by network. Oof, close one, close one. I'll say we're winning. Uh, yeah, uh, transactions per block by network. I think we're winning. Uh, fees USD, Bitcoin smashing it, fees Satoshi's Bitcoin smashing it. Block reward ratio, again, time, price, value, utility. Blockchain growth, laughing at Bcrash there. And here we go with the politics. Not really interested in seven days, but 24 hours. Tau with 0.1%. Core coin. Oh, so it looks like uh, F2 pool has been shoved out of the top spot there oh, let's, let's get back there whoa what did i just see there on bitcoin cheapers right so we've got pool in f2 oh f2 pool's been pushed into second btc dot oh seriously coin dance i was just looking at that come on i want to see this bad boy maybe because things are changing fast here we have to uh, move the screen up and down uh that's cool coin right so uh, f2 pool second uh, btc.com down in three, four, five, six. Oh, Cano and uh, Binance. All right. The Tal Tell. Uh, look at that. There is no Tal on there. None at all. Massive sign. Uh, B crash. 
again, like Ample, BTC.com, both uh, Bitmain, so Bitcoin Enterprises, they can do one. Oh, wow, look at this. So Tau still with 30% on there, and uh, Hathor, 45%. Look at that, they have squeezed Huobi. Uh, Huobi's only got a 2.7%. And again, as I said on the, uh, the news report earlier, I think Hathor has done this on purpose because I think they've been keeping an eye on Huobi, probably spotted when Huobi had dumped pretty much all of their BSV and then just simply went in and hijacked their hash so that they don't have any uh, BSV on the books for dumping. Oh, Matapool. I can see Matapool on there. Daniel Kravitz and Co. Good to see them on there. Um, yeah, they're, they're hoping to become a huge competitor in the mining industry with uh, the amount of transactions and blocks that they can build really efficiently so keep keep an eye on Matterpool um, is what I would say there uh, F2 pools on there btc.com uh, no uh, no pool in but but never mind but this is the main one good to see uh, Huobi right down there I think that's uh, I think that says volumes personally um, uh, let's just let's just check out the uh, the price I mean this this coin crap chart is just an absolute shit show. It's hilarious. Look at the, I've seen all the all the shit coiners on social media on Twitter putting these laser eyes in there. Honestly, it's just absolutely hilarious. A uh, Cardano, twenty three percent. I mean, honestly, who's buying that shit? Um, I heard uh, one of chaps like the modern investor uh, earlier today saying that he couldn't understand why Cardano had gone up. You know. And I was, uh, um, who's, what was the other one? Um, a Binance token. And like he has, he literally doesn't even look at whale alerts with the amount of tether that's being printed and where it's going. Literally, just the ignorance of these shit corners just baffles me. I'm just like, if you are this emotionally involved, which they are, because they're all tripping on egos at the moment, you know, and like, I'm just like, you, <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. Like, you're going to get absolutely wrecked. And it's not like the information isn't out there, you know. I mean, I found it. You know, I'm, I'm showing it to everyone else as well. Uniswap, 54% in a day. Like, yeah, that's totally natural with gas fees and all that. I mean, it's a it's a joke. Look, look, uh, Bitcoin has actually been like pushed out of the top 20 now, according to uh, according to CoinCrap. Oh, look, yeah, we're on uh, number 21. But look at this, still holding strong. Still holding strong after that after that um, blow from uh, OK Coin. That you know what I suppose you can call it a, a dig, wasn't it? Really, look at this. So I mean, still up on the month. Hasn't really changed all that much in the week. Still up in in 24 hours. So I would say I think it's literally it was Huobi that has been dumping it because, like I said, all BSVers. All tra you know, BSV traders are now on uh, are now on TDXP app, and for those who haven't seen TDXP app, we'll just uh, have a quick look at that now. Uh, I I usually go find it on uh, find it on Twitter, TDXP app. When uh, when he wants to find it for me, TDXP. Here we go, TDXP app. That's the one. That's the one. Here we go. Great, uh, and this is this is Tramp doing most of the marketing for TDXP. So they come up with a, a new f um, uh, term here called alt barrassment. You just have to go over it. Alt barrassment, you know. You can uh, bet against it on TDXP, and it doesn't matter because TDXP app does not dump the asset, so it doesn't devalue it. And what's this one? You know what they call uh, the future of trading in Bitcoin? TDXP app. <laughs> Yeah, good. Market's closed. Hey. All right. Yeah, it's uh, TDXP app. I mean, even I've been on. I've had to, I've had a bit of fun on there, to be honest with you. I think I've got like one trade open at the moment. But it's it's I I actually really enjoy it. Uh, you know, like I said, it just simply fancy a flutter. Be interesting to see how they uh, what they how they class it as tax because effectively it's a gam you're gambling against TDXP app being the house, you know. So uh, is it actually gambling? Because I don't technically think it's trading. Um, but you can see I'm sort of like a little bit down there, but that's because I opened that ages ago and we've got a number go up. But 
I've no doubt that will uh, that will reverse very soon. It's a silver chart. I don't know what that. Don't know what that's doing up there. Um, but you can uh, trade it against all these other cryptos. Um, silver chart. I don't really want silver chart. Uh, BSV uh, USD. There we go. That's more like it. Chart. So again, you can just you can just follow it. Buy and sell. It's really easy. You think some, you think something is going down, you bet it goes down. You think something might go up, you just bet it goes up. That's it. And you're bet you're betting against the house, which is TDXP app. So, so my my question was, you know, if 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 the tr if the traders in BSV are using TDXP app, who was it that was dumping BSV? Well, I suspect now that it was Huobi because that's the only reason they would be mining it. And personally, I think Hathor knew that and saw what was going on. And the moment Huobi pretty much dumped all their bags in order to start mining it again, I literally think Hathor has gone, nope, no, you don't, mate. So look, because they've been fighting it. Uh, Huobi initially, I think they had 30% uh, hash rate. Then it, then it went down to 15 when I, when I looked at it previously. And now it's all the way down to 8%. My memory says, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, if, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, two. They've only got 2.7% of the hash rate. So I've seen it go from 30 to 15 to, to 2.7. They are literally not holding any Bitcoin right now, which, uh, which, which I think is absolutely great. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, but anyway, we, we can't leave... Uh, can't leave without having a look at cool coin here. Honestly, absolutely outrageous. Um, shit coiners literally just like cheering, like number go up because they don't understand that this is literally like a Ponzi scheme. I mean, can you, can you, I can literally feel, uh, I, I had a sense of the, uh, I suppose the anguish that people are going to feel. Be like Obi-Wan Kenobi when, um, when he, when he feels that Alderaan has been uh, destroyed by the Death Star. Um, that's kind of like what I felt like now, all these people just being suckered in. They have no idea, but they're not using it for anything. So the question is going to be like, what did you, what made you think it had any value when you can't use it for anything? You can't spend it. You know, but then shitcoin has come back with, well, you can use it as a store of value. Oh, well, if it's a store of value, then just keep your money in there. Why are you complaining about the price going down? <laughs> why, why are you complaining about it crashing to zero when it's a store of value? You know? <laughs> Honestly, it's just another level of intellect that I, I said like I, I never knew existed uh, until I got into uh, until I got into Bitcoin. And uh, talking about levels of uh, levels of intellect, like oh my god, like somebody uh, sent me this earlier today, and literally I almost just fell off my chair when I saw it. Um, I almost couldn't believe it. Um, check check this out. Thank you, Daz, for a look at this. Look at this. This 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 is actually a, a post by Lisa Edwards. You know, CSW sister saying, ooh, uh, a BHC, billion uh, billion happiness, $100. Uh, check out their total supply, only 50,000 tokens. You know, so literally, it's like number go up. Is literally all, so that's why uh, I put this image up there. Scarcity make number go up. Honestly, I'm just I'm furious with these shit coiners because it's, they're dangerous. They have no idea about the thin ice that they're skating on and encouraging other people to pile in with them. Literally, they are going to fall through the ice. They are going to get absolutely wrecked. All of them. It's it's really scary. It's really scary, you know. Um, but like I said, just, just stay away from stupid shit coiners. That's literally all you can do. Um, but talking about uh, uh, talking about looking at decent figures, check this out. So uh, whatever D app is, it is still absolutely motoring along. Look at this. I mean, it, the the transactions seem to tail off uh, um, a for a little bit yesterday, but still consistently thir thirteen to fourteen transactions per second on the chain. Um, you know, and it's huge. And again, we don't know, I don't know who, who's behind it, but you can see these relatively, uh, sort of, yeah, relatively sort of, you know, big, biggish blocks on the, uh, on the, on the chain. But that's, that, my point is that's still going. And if you look at the charts, 
on the next page. Look at this. So, um, yeah, I mean, 3,631,544 transactions in the last 30 days. But really, the interesting figure is this one, starting from the 14th of uh, February. So it had done uh, effectively 100,000 transactions on the 14th of February uh, to now uh, 3,631,000. So that's it's 3,500,000 transactions in, uh, in six days. So um, we'll just work out what that is on average. Here we go, get the old uh, calculator out. Um, 3,500,000, there we go. Uh, divided by six days. Uh, that equals, I'm gonna divide that by 24. Oh, had that wrong there, hold on. And uh, my phone's crashed, here we go. Do that again. Um, Three million five hundred thousand divided by six, which is uh, five hundred eighty-three thousand transactions a day divided by twenty-four, which is a uh, twenty-four thousand three hundred and five transactions every hour divided by sixty. So that's four hundred and five transactions a minute divided by sixty again. So it's basically 6.7 transactions per second, which is BTC capacity. And that's on that's on this one app. So this this one app, <laughs> this one app is doing is doing the BTC max transactions just by itself. It just goes to show you how utterly shit uh, BTC is. Um, but but really, really great seeing that. Uh, we'll just we'll just remind ourselves quickly. Uh, about the size of transactions that can exist on um, on Bitcoin by looking at these images that were uploaded onto the um, onto the network. Let's go find them again. And they come in. And again, this is just for uh, newbies watching the show for the first time. No, where is it? Come on. No, it's here somewhere. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, did I just see it then? Did I see something? There we go, that's the one. The BSV Bliss image was six megabytes. And this was not a block, this was a transaction. Six megabytes in one transaction. The time, the type of tr the trans transactions that can now run operating systems. And this here, the, uh, the deep space field, was a 10 megabyte transaction. Not a block, a 10 megabyte transaction. Uh, where is it? There we go. That's the one we wanted. 10 megabytes in one transaction. You know, the, the network scales, it's it's absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. All uh, right, so let's, uh, you know how I, uh, you know how I love my videos. Uh, just quickly, let's uh, go through my, um, my uh, Twitter feed here, because this is how I, um, Anything that's interesting, I obviously store on my profile and share with everybody else. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This this is a really good post here by Max saying, Bitcoin is our only opportunity to break out of echo chambers as an evolutionary step of a for civilization. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that was the, the um, Chamath Palliapitiya clip on uh, CNBC, the full episode. Um, yeah, and uh, Twitch with their uh, new you well, not new users, but look at this, 1,117 new users in uh, 24 hours. You know, that, that's, that's the first time they've broken above broken above uh, 1,000 uh, in a 24-hour period. It's brilliant. This was a fantastic um, uh, podcast that Kurt Wattuck did with uh, this, this chap, I can't remember what it was. Um, but uh, the quote here at the end of the interview was, uh, Bitcoin makes good people more powerful. And powerful people, more good. <laughs> uh, brilliant explanations there. And this was uh, this. We'll, we'll, in fact, we'll, we'll play this now. So we'll leave it here for the uh, um, YouTube uh, YouTube trailer. Get your tweet etched on Twitch forever on the Bitcoin blockchain. Do it today at www.joinTwitch.com. Buy BSV.live. 
the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online.